So the entire country figured out something that basically everybody else already knew. Um, Daniel Jones sucks, and everybody's been saying this for God knows how long now. We, you know, we've been known that he is a terrible quarterback um, with you know a cream puff arm who really can't read coverages. He's a one read quarterback. You know, he's too conservative, and he doesn't really have that elite accuracy that jumps off the tape. And there's really no redeeming quality to his game other than he's able to run because he's quick. But, you know, that, that, that doesn't matter at the end of the day because when you're a quarterback, you, you are being asked to win the game with your arm, not your legs, unless you go for like 200 rushing yards and your team wins, which, you know, almost never happens with quarterbacks unless your name is Lamar Jackson. So, regardless of that, and nobody's comparing him to Lamar because, you know, I wouldn't compare him to Lamar's fucking turdy shits in the toilet. Because Lamar's turdy shit's in the toilet probably would play quarterback better than Daniel Jones, if we're being fucking honest. So, Daniel Jones is just, he is not the guy. He hasn't been the guy for six years. But you get these bunch of Giant fans that are diehard Daniel Jones fanboys. It's like Daniel Jones is their fucking hero. He's their savior. And I don't know, maybe they have something in common I'm just not seeing. But Daniel Jones is a fucking scrub. This guy can't read a coverage. And he can't play at the NFL level. He's shown this for, once again, six years into his NFL career. He's been a capable starter in maybe one and a half of those years, and that's just not good enough. In six years, when you've only been good for one year, it's time to find, you know, a new career or be a backup, hold the clipboard for the rest of your um, NFL playing days because you're not cut out to play in this league. He doesn't have the traits. He doesn't have the mental side of the game down, and he's six years in. He's still, you know, making bad passes, not reading coverage. Throwing the first guy practically every play. I'm gonna go back, you know, go and try to rewatch um, um, the first half of this game and see, you know, what he was sort of looking at because the first half was just it was just little dinky throws. It was he wasn't making any difficult throws. It was little dinky passes, you know, to the sideline and the flats, little swing passes to the running. But it's just ridiculous. It's fucking stupid. And that's not, first of all, I know it's bad game planning, and a lot of people will say, I know all the the, um, the, the Daniel Jones nut huggers um, and dick riders will say, but oh my god, the receivers, they were dropping so many passes, Daniel put them on the money, and they dropped, I don't care where he fucking put the throws, that's football. Receivers are not going to catch every single pass, and you know that if you're a quarterback, you know that if you're a receiver, you know that if you're a coach, you know that if you're a fan, you know that if you're anything. If you have any common sense what fucking so ever, you don't understand that drops are a part of football and there's nothing that you can do about it. So instead of screaming from the mountaintops about how, oh my, it's not Daniel Jones' fault that they lost the fucking game. Oh, but he played such a good game. He didn't play a good game. He didn't push the ball down the damn field. He can only throw to one level, and that is the um, zero to eight yard level. He can't throw intermediate. He's only good at dinky little fucking four yard passes. And when you when you're trying to when you're trying to throw deep with with him, he just he shows how cream puff his arm is because every ball floats in the air for an elongated period of time, and that's just that spells disaster because that leads to picks because the ball's wobbling, the defense has more time to react to the ball in the air, it leads to incompletions and it just leads to bad plays. That's why Brian Dable and you know this Giants offense is the way that it's. That's why it's so conservative, why there's no risks, why there's no deep shots is because the quarterback is the one that is holding the offense back. Do I think that Drew Locke is any good? No, I think Drew Locke is fucking horrible, but I think Drew Locke's probably two times the quarterback Daniel Jones is. I think Locke would, you know, play okay, probably throw a lot of interceptions, but you'd see him pushing the ball down the field, which would be a positive sign for the offense. You've got to get a good quarterback in there to see if your offense is actually working, because once again, and I know people will be, oh, he had a great game today. <laughs> he had a great game. He didn't have a fucking great game. If you watch the first half, he played like fucking shit. All right, and they didn't score a single touchdown. It was literally field goal, field goal, field goal, field goal, fucking field goal. They got 15 points off field goals. You can't win games with like seven field goals unless you're watching. Then they won a game with like eight field goals, but they got lucky. Let's be honest. Guess who they fucking beat? Guess who they beat? They beat the Giants. So that just goes to show the ineptitude of the New York Giants organization. You keep starting the scrub Daniel Jones at quarterback. You're going to get losses like that where your offense is fucking horrible. And the other team can go down and score a bunch of field goals and win the game. The Giants defense played well. They only allowed, what, 20 points? So they held the Cowboys offense 20 points, and they lost the game. The defense should be yelling at Daniel Jones. They should be saying, you are a fucking piece of shit. You are a bum. Put Drew Locke in. And if I was Malik Neighbors, I would say, hey, um, hey, Coach Dable, I'm going to request a trade. 
Um, you know, it's either you put Drew Locke in the game or um, you start him next week, or maybe that DeVito guy, because he, I mean, he's probably fucking 15 times better than Daniel Jones, let's be honest. Um, it, you either start Locke or DeVito, or you trade me to a, to, to a good team, because I can't stand this. This guy's fucking horrible. Um, I wouldn't want to spend another minute um, with Daniel Jones as my quarterback, because he just can't read the field. He doesn't know what he's looking at. And the saddest part about it is he is athletic. He does have one upside, but it's one upside. It doesn't mean anything for playing quarterback, so it's not like that has any impact on the game. Um, I know there was a couple design quarterback runs. He didn't go anywhere um, because he's pussy. He's afraid to get hit. So not only is he afraid to get hit, he's also afraid to throw more than 15 yards down the field. And he's not accurate more than 15 yards down the field. So really, it doesn't even fucking matter. You can't stretch the field with the guy because he doesn't know how to. He's not accurate. The ball floats in the air. He doesn't have the arm strength. He's got a cream puff arm. Um, and all that, all that really matters is his accuracy. Because if you're not accurate, you don't complete passes. And I'm pretty sure he's like fucking two for fucking 30-something when it comes to throwing past eight yards. He's horrible. The guy can only throw little dinky passes. He's one read and run. He is a guy who should be playing a different position because he has, I mean, you can't succeed with this, with this guy being the quarterback for your offense because you know that you, you there is a box. You're playing within a certain amount of space because you're playing in like a 20-yard amount of space because he will not go more than 20 yards down the field with his throws. And when he does, it's intercepted or it's incomplete. So you're playing within a 20-yard sort of confine a 20-yard space, and you get a 20-yard offense, essentially, where you run it and you check down. You can't win like that in the NFL. That's not how you win games. Um, I know you know, I, I know that you know, playing safe and taking the check down with the defense gives you is a good thing, but you don't do it all the time. Sometimes you got to take risks. Daniel Jones just sucks. He doesn't know when to take those risks, and he can't because he doesn't have the arm strength to do it. I'm done with talking about Daniel Jones. The guy's fucking horrible. He's the single reason they lost the game. A lot of people, oh my god, what the machine works from. Yeah, you just expose yourself as a fucking fanboy of Daniel Jones. You think, you know, you think he's so great and he's your fucking hero. The only reason you think he's so good is because he's your hero. You look up to the guy. I don't know why you'd look up to a fucking scrub like that. But regardless, it's your life. Go live it. So I'm done with this video. Thank you all for watching. This has been Mr. Truth, and this was nothing but the truth.